me, Jenny Kirk, and it's been a long time since we've done a box opening and review video. I've uh, been concentrating on the new camera, running that around the uh, model railway, but uh, been out and picked up some of the things that I had on pre-order, and I thought I'd share some of these with you. So without further ado, I thought we'd uh, get on down and uh, take a look at this little beauty. It's just hit the shops today. Uh, I literally walked through the door of Tim's shop at uh, Arcadia in Shaw. Um, big up Tim and the Arcadia Posse, yeah. And uh, he just had the delivery and uh, was about to start ringing around all the people who'd ordered them. And he went, oh, you must be psychic, so it's me a phone call. He was right. Uh, but this is R3482 and uh, this is the uh, Rolls-Royce Sentinel chain drive version of the locomotive but in the livery of the Manchester Ship Canal Company uh, and this is DH16, the DH standing for diesel hydraulic. Uh, I believe that they also had locomotives that just had a, a D prefix which I presume were probably something like diesel mechanical or diesel electric, but in the instance of these they were identified by DH and then a number. Now one thing to note about the Manchester Ship Canal Company, the railway locomotives, is that diesel locomotives were numbered sequentially, but some had a D prefix and some had a DH prefix, and that was just simply to denote the type of transmission it had. Um, this is number 16. It would have been bought new um, probably in the 1960s, so it would have coexisted with the last of the steam locomotives. I'm actually looking forward to the Hornby W4 Peckett locomotive in Manchester Ship Canal livery because uh, I'll then have two locomotives that couldn't normally work together within that 1960s period. Well, let's open this up. It's surprising actually, Hornby for this release have gone back to a slightly older version of their locomotive boxes. Uh, and it's interesting to note that Newer locomotives tend to have the slide-off slip case and then you have the, the inner detail that uh, the plastic lifts out of. But in this instance, they've gone for an older style box. And uh, I'm going to put that to one side. And uh, we can see we've got extra details. And this is the same as the previous releases of the Sentinel diesel shunters. We've got these buffer beam blanks that actually fit quite neatly into the NEM pockets. And what these do is, because there, there has to be a little cutout, and this is for the tension lock couplings to fit, if you don't want to use those and you, you want the locomotive to look more like the real ones did, you can use these just to block off that cutout space if you so wish. Easy enough to lift it out typical piece of plastic there just to stop the damage from rubbing in transit. Now, one thing I do want to say about these locomotives is check them very carefully in the shop when you're buying these. The reason I say this is this is, was the third example that we got through before I was, I was quite happy. The first example had actually, quite surprisingly enough, not been tempo printed on both sides, and that is a serious quality control error from Hornby. And uh, it had the lining, but it didn't have MSC DH16 on one side. And as you can see here, the locomotive is supposed to have that on both sides. Uh, that may be an isolated case, but even so, do check carefully. The second locomotive that I tested didn't actually run perfectly. It had a kind of stutter to it. Now, as Tim and I talked about in the shop, we were firmly of the opinion that it would probably improve and that stuttering would disappear with careful running in. But I thought, as I had the pick of all of the ones he'd had delivered, I thought I'd make sure I had one that uh, did work well. So I've got one here which, on his test track, uh, worked without any kind of hesitation. Now I'm just going to put this to one side and I'm not sure whether it's going to show up but one uh, potentially a downside that I have noticed and it has been highlighted by people with previous releases of this locomotive is these uh, little valances. They're very, very thin. You've got the metal handrail and then the infill and it's the infill has been moulded in a plastic which appears to be the same colour as the body colour. And what that means is if you get a bright light behind this plastic, it goes slightly translucent. 
And I know people who have repainted their locomotive have not run into this problem because the extra layer of paint stops that slight translucency. But it is a bit of a niggle. But by the same token, um, on a locomotive at this price, I think I paid about £52 for this, um, really, some of these little niggles, you're going to have to really, I suppose, live with. It just comes with the price tag. I mean, I've got a, a, a light here on Zoe's Ifo, and I'm going to shine it behind that valance, and I, I don't know whether that's coming up. It should sort of go a little bit translucent on that side, is it? So you can see there what I'm talking about. That said, I wouldn't exactly say that it's a major drawback. And under most viewing conditions, you're not really going to notice. In terms of detail and livery application, um, it's as good as the previous versions. The grille on the front um, and on the back is exceptionally well done. I think that actually is an etched brass insert that goes in there. But it is supremely done. And the lining and the application of the Sentinel Works logo and the MSC DH16 is very, very crisp. Now, I can't see any bleed over from any of that, so I'm pretty happy with that. We've got our um, representation of the wheels, the, um, the castings on there, and these are actually finished in a slight grey colour. I do quite like that. Uh, it's quite nice. And there's a slight amount of over-oiling from the factory. I can see a little bit of um, slopping out there from these gears, but again, not really a huge problem. The brake rigging, as we can see, is all comes factory applied. So as I said before, the only extra items supplied that may need fitting, depending on whether you wanted to, are these blanks for the buffer beams. And you can see there the recess that the tension lock has necessitated, which I'm talking about, but these fit quite nicely. We've also got there on the buffer beam the DH16 applied as per the prototype. And if you do a search on Google Images, there's a lot of pictures of particularly this locomotive actually that come up. And I think that this was quite a late survivor. So I've talked about um, it being hopefully applicable to run in parallel with the uh, Manchester Ship Canal Company's uh, W4 Peckett that Hornby have also got a model coming out of. Um, but by the same token, I believe they lasted in this livery right through to the end of MSC rail operations. And I think these ended up at Birkenhead somewhere, or Ellesmere Port rings a bell. Uh, in this livery, uh, probably about 2003-2004. As you can see on here, the buffers, they're not sprung. And in all honesty with you, I'm quite happy with that. From most people's points of view, sprung buffers are an extra expense that add nothing to the model. When you're running them with tension lock couplings, the rolling stock can't even get close enough for the buffers to touch. So having them sprung is just extra expense that really we could do without in this age of inflation. The handrails are very, very fine. I really do like these. And uh, we did review one of these models previously. I think we, we did Barabelle, which was the cranked version. And I have nothing but praise for these Hornby models. And I really only hope that uh, this is opening the door for more uh, industrial shunters. Certainly Hornby have announced the W4 Packet. Um, and I'm really looking forward to that with immense amounts of interest. And I'm also hoping that the very, very short four coupled um, running chassis, which runs actually quite well through point work, bodes well for the likes of Hornby and other manufacturers to consider bringing out models ready to run of some of the other uh, four wheeled British rail shunter classes, such as the class 01, 02. 06. Um, so looking forward to seeing if anything turns up in that respect. There's not really much else that can be said for this. The price tag is very, very good value for money. The model itself is exceptionally well put together. It's well thought out. If you look in through the cab, you don't get a full length, a full depth cab, but that's really only to be expected. In a, a locomotive this small, you've got to put the motor and other gubbins somewhere. There's a reasonable weight to it, and that's good. It means that when it runs, it does have reasonable traction and holds the track quite well. And that's really all I have to say about this. It's a great model, 
great value for money. It's a rerun in what should hopefully be a very popular and useful livery of this uh, venerable Sentinel Oforo shunter. So uh, I'm looking forward very much to see if in the future Hornby bring out any other liveries which uh, will play to my industrial layout interests. I'm also looking forward to seeing whether they might actually consider doing the six coupled version as well, which is something which will be quite interesting. Anyway, I hope this review has been incredibly informative to you. Don't forget to like it and share it too. And let all your friends know about this uh, video. Uh, as I've said before, at the time of recording this video, this has only just hit the shops. So uh, consider this a bit of a try before you buy. Let people know that they can take a closer look here and uh, decide if it is the model for them. Anyway, you take very good care of yourself and we'll be back next time for another video. So me, Jenny Kirk, saying bye for now.